This week's sponsor is City Sites UK, bringing you the best building and landmarks in the UK. Whatever you are interested in, there'll be something for everyone, from football stadiums to cathedrals and everything in between. Give them a follow and subscribe. Thank you. everybody and welcome to the Billy Moore podcast and today's special guest is Akib. How are you my mate? Buzzing mate. Brilliant story, thanks for coming on. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know you? From the beginning, let's start at the beginning. Right, well um, I was born in Cheat Mill, Manchester. It's uh, not off, uh, not far off Strange Ways uh, where they do all the nooky gear. Um, and um, yeah, born and bred, stayed in Cheat Mill most of my life apart from when uh, I was locked up. And I um, had it, you know, my upbringing was good, you know, I mean, it, it was dangerous in Cheetah Mill, but when we were growing up, we didn't really see it, you know, at the time. It's only as you get older and then you realise, bloody hell, it's like a war zone here, you know, um, at that time they started to have a lot of beef with Moss Side, so there was a lot of... Uh, yeah, so you must be able to similar age to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'm going to be 15 in a few months, so... Uh, uh, 14, uh, 49 I'm now, same, yeah, same yeah, age, yeah. yeah. So when are you 50? Next year. Well, well there you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it, around about the same time it was. So um, mum and dad, um, well, my dad came over in the 60s, uh, he just grafted me, you know, you know, never got in trouble with the police, you know, never did nothing wrong. And then uh, I come along, um, first of all, um, my mum had me like 12 years after my brother. She had like a lot of miscarriages and stuff. So when I came along, I was premature. Um, and uh, the story was apparently at the hospital, they said to me, dad, look, this is 50-50 this. W what do you want to do? So he's like, he's distraught. Luckily for me, um, his best mate was there and he said, look, you know what, leave it, leave it in the hands of God, yeah. you know, be all right. And uh, my mum had me cesarean and uh, at that time, in them days, they couldn't believe how small I was. I was like literally two pounds and uh, they had to keep me in an incubator for two months. So you can imagine, you know. Um, the anxiety you yeah, you were going yeah, Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my me, me mum, you know, when she tells me the story and that. So I kind of feel like I'm lucky to be alive, you know, um, here and now, you know, 50 years on nearly. So, um, yeah, went to school, uh, primary school, you know, it, it was fine. I didn't really get into trouble. I was cheeky more than, you know, actually, I wasn't really a fighter or nothing, but I was cheeky, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, my attention span, even then, was like, they said my attention span was a three-year-old, you know. Um, uh, if it was now, they probably class maybe did some flipping you know adhd or something yeah. but in them days you got a crack crap round the head and told to get on with it so yeah primary school um uh, secondary school was um not far off um that's you know when you start thinking you're a bit of a lad you know um you have you know hormone issues this and that you know start getting into football it's um I remember when I was 12, yeah, it was my first match. Yeah. I mean, in them days, you wouldn't have no Asian kid going to the game. You know I mean, I remember standing in the street for then, and I was like, fucking, I was shitting it. And uh, I think we played West Ham in the FA Cup. And um, it was obviously, it was standing in them days, and uh, we were getting beat. We were playing West Ham, and uh, they had this black lad and uh, a winger running down the wing and this woman next to me, she's like effing about you fucking black bastard and, that. and she looks at me, oh sorry love and I just remember that, I think fuck you know I remember uh, she was a woman? This was, yeah that was a woman, <laughs> but, you know, uh, probably from Salford uh, but yeah, no, um, so yeah, uh, going on from there uh, when I went to college, that's when uh, I'll pull this, let me just pull that yeah, back yeah, now, sure. Sure. Um, we went, uh, started college, that's when we started to uh, think, right, okay, you know, let's try and make some money, you know, you see other lads doing bits and bats, you know, in Cheetah Mill, there's a lot of drugs running going on and stuff like that, I was too scared to get into that, I mean, cause we had... What uh, age was you now? 18. So you don't about the time, like the Pepper Hill, the Gooch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was a lot of violence back yeah, then, I yeah, mean, yeah. Manchester back then, you know, was on my map. Well, it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think with, what it was with Cheetah Mill, they were more organised, you know, mm. they were into the armed robberies and stuff, whereas uh, Gooch and Pepper Hill, they were 
they were as organised at the time. Um, Territorial, weren't they? Yeah, they? yeah, yeah. They, they they were fighting with each other more than you know yeah. anyone else. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they, it was dangerous times. Um, so yeah, um, started college, and uh, that's when um, yeah, we got onto credit cards. Um, there was a guy uh, who was studying with us. He was a foreign student, and uh, we basically stole his identity. You know. Um, redirected a post and everything he didn't he wasn't aware of it to address in cheating mill and um in in them days they used to have um checkbooks so we ordered two yeah. checkbooks and we went on a spending for, uh, spree you know um i mean at, at that time you know it wasn't about money it was just possessions you know getting you know for your mates and that you know you want you want to be up there with the lads yeah you yeah. know you know and um and and then you start progressing you know bit by bit uh you start getting into realizing you can make money out of it and um there was a lot of flaws back then wasn't he with credit cards and book the, the, the checkbooks and that I think you remember do you remember the um like the monday books that you used to get for the post office when yeah. people used to just change the dates on them yeah and the, yeah, and the pages yeah 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 take the yeah. staples out yeah 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 That's... yeah no you're right you're right you know um it was uh, good times then, um, you know, obviously there was CCTV footage wasn't, you know, the best. And uh, uh, not like now, you know, you can't fart Smudges without. Smudges everywhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, so what's happened is uh, from there, um, I used to spend a lot of time in the snooker halls and stuff. Um, I was uh, quite decent. Tell me, tell me lad now, thinks he can have a bit, but... Um, we we got lucky. Uh, there was a snooker hall in uh, the town centre, Piccadilly Twenty One. Alex Higgins used to be in there, and uh, in fact, uh, me, uh, one of my uncles used to supply him. You know, because he, he was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a dude, a bit of a cokehead, and um, yeah. So um, we used to be in there all the time, and um, met this girl, and um, didn't know what she was doing, you know, work wise and that. But um, lucky for us. She worked for American Express, and I was like, right, okay. So, started to like go out with her a bit, take her out, you know, got confidence, and then um, we started to get it, bits of information. But uh, what it was was uh, we fell on these books. Um, there was these books called uh, Who's Who in the Arab World, and in that it used to have a lot of information, mm. addresses, um, you know, the wealth and. And, and stuff like that so uh who's who in the Arab world in the Arab world yeah 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 it was they were, they were oh, seriously they were gold at the time it was like, the, um, it was like the, the, the magazine the Forbes magazine yeah yeah but I mean detail like you know you know more information oh hello hello hell of a lot so um I started off by just asking oh you know um can you find out because not everyone's got American Express but mainly in them days mm. if you had American Express you know you had a bit of money um they weren't just handing them out so um i asked her about someone she you know gave me a bit of detail and stuff and then uh and uh just gained the confidence and uh got got some information for right you know what let's ring up american express and i think american express is worldwide so it's not just england you drink mm. up like you could ring, ring up brazil with certain information just say look you know um just want to know what i spent last week or something you know of that nature um, they'd ask you the security questions and then you you build it's like well it is a jigsaw you build it up to where like say if it was yourself I'd know more about you at hand yeah for example your passport number you don't know your passport number um, and then uh, uh, once we'd gained everything uh, that's when we'd go start shopping uh, whether I mean what our alias was uh, what we'd do is we use uh, couriers because we never want, you know, you don't want to show your face. Yeah. We do the orders over the phones and stuff. And at first, again, it was just like uh, wanting to be a bit like Robin Hood, you know, uh, with my mates and that, you know, game friends. You, you'd just get stuff and you, you practically give it to them next, next to nothing. And then... Yeah, then it's money for nothing at the time, isn't it? It is money for yeah. nothing, yeah. And then uh, realised, you know, we can start earning from this. And then we did, you know. We was like high-flying, I mean... One of my first cars was a Porsche, you know, 
couldn't even drive and I was driving around in a Porsche and <laughs> telling me mum and dad that it's obviously borrowed because yeah. <laughs> living, living a double life you know, at home, yeah. You must have been killing it then at the time. Yeah, Porsches. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we was because like... Were these the Sables, the Porsche Sables that were Yeah, back? red one. Uh, yeah. The other day someone sent me a picture because what, what we did was, you know, when I knew that they were going to knock on the door, what yeah. I did was in them, we didn't have camera phones, we just had cameras. Yeah. So what, what we did was... Uh, I destroyed all my photos and everything, anything yeah, yeah. that I had in the house. And um, and then one day, uh, just recently, someone uh, sent me a picture um, of, of my car. I've only got like two, three pictures. And um, yeah, I remember <laughs> that, that bloody Porsche. I remember picking my dad up yeah, from the airport. My dad worked away uh, most <laughs> of his life, yeah. yeah. Gentle giant, big fella, yeah. And I uh, remember picking him up and he's like, Bloody hell! It's like getting out of one plane and getting into. Okay, like you couldn't get out, <laughs> you know. He's, you know, because they're dead low down mm-hmm. and that. And he goes, "Who's is this?" And I go, "Oh, dad, it's not mine. You know, I borrowed it." And uh, yeah, that Porsche. Yeah, it got me quite a quite a lot of attention and stuff. Uh, I remember uh, I got to know him after that. But I met, there was a, a notorious gangster from Cheapville called uh, Aka. Um, not purple, have you? No, we said <laughs> <laughs> no, not purple, like it. But um, he was, you know, um, God rest his soul. He, he got, he got shot, uh, he got killed, stabbed dead uh, a few years back. Yeah. But um, I remember he stopped me and he goes, "Who's is this?" So obviously, I'm not going to say it was mine. I said, ah, it's, it's my brother's." He goes, "Yeah, let me have a drive." I'm like, "Oh my God!" You know what I'm going to say to him? Um, he could, he just grabbed me by the throat and dragged me out anyway. So he, he drove it, just drove it around the block and got out and said, nice one, kid. And I was like, flipping it. But we struck up a relationship after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and further down the line, he was like, kind of like protecting protecting me. Um, because, um, like I said, there was a lot of eyes on us. Like, what the fuck are these up to? Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, he, he was uh, he, he, he was a character, notorious um, in GML. So, um so yeah, um, college. You know, as t- soon as co- we got, we got actually got a place at uni. Yeah, but there was no way we was tra- jet setting around. You know, uh, we'd go to America. Yeah, like you'd be going to Butlins. Uh, I remember one week we went to America on the Monday. We got some Rolexes, and when we come back, it, the customs were the same ones who was on shift yeah. on the Monday. So they thought these are drug runners. So they stopped us, yeah. And we had the watches, we had the, we had them on, but we didn't pick no duty on them. So they took them off us, yeah. yeah. And we're thinking, you know what I mean? We fucked here. But all we had to do is pay the duty and take them. You know what I mean? Was the duty not much on them? No, no. I mean, not not, not as, for a Rolex anyway. No, not. But you was making a killing on them. You yeah. know what I mean, with the paperwork, you're selling them. You're selling them to the shops. Everyone's making money. You know, it's costing you nothing. A few phone calls. You're selling it on to certain shops and they, they're making their profit and then, you know. Brewsties, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where we thought, whoa, this is proper money. Serious. Um, yeah, because we, we were doing all sorts, like, you like say if the new phone come out, a new Nokia phone come out, I'd order 100 and we'd just flood cheating mill, you know. Um, and, uh, like, say if, it, I don't know, say if it was 500, we'd sell it for 200 because it's 100% market for us. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, even to this, fact that I was like when I was driving around in the car I'd order parts for my car yeah brand new set of uh, alloys and all sorts anything mate anything so you're in a position aren't you to do that at the time with the, yeah with the resources that you've got at hand I mean the information that you must have collected oh mate look because you, you know, know when you know let's see I, I know when you phone these when I was in Thailand yeah, I had yeah. a credit card yeah, in the UK yeah yeah like sometimes I'd be bladded on off my cake and I forget yeah yeah I forget me me, me cold and everything yeah you know yeah I mean? you do don't you you I do thought, oh, mate, and I'd be arguing with them yeah I'd tell you everything yeah, that you needed no, to know no, but no. one thing would be like lost yeah be going, yeah, yeah. I mean over the years we had some episodes mate at one time yeah because uh, one of my mates he, he got caught before me but he, he got caught in Holland mm. um, they, they were there doing shopping and that and they've got onto him and it was, it was major at the time because uh, they they stopped him off, uh, stopped him taking off at the airport. Yeah. It was all over the news and that. And uh, so American Express were aware, obviously now, you know some, you know, a lot of frauds going on. And um, 
they even um, when we after after my uh, trial and that, uh, they approached my solicitor offering us a job, um, you know, and it's mad. But at, at that time, it, it was never going to happen because in the back of your head, you think. Still active. Well, you never you never say never, do you? In yeah. you know, obviously now twenty years on and um, touch wood, um, you know, never been in trouble again. Powerful, yeah. yeah. So, um, right. What else? So, where did this lead to? See, because we we read about like the, you know, you, you conned. It was a Beverly Hills. It was yeah. It was a. Tell us about that jewel, in Beverly Hills. Tell us the story because that's an interesting story. That jewel is uh, it's called Bijan. It's still it's still Bijan. open now. Yeah, recently I was watching boxing and um, who was it? Um, Galadi, what's his name? Um, Begins with the G, 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 they call him. A triple G. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm watching him, and his shorts are sponsored by. He's, he's got Bijan on it. So because I, yeah. I didn't know if you still, you know, he's still he's still going, um, even after what we did to him. So yeah, no, we was just uh, flicking through the magazines, and I'd, I'd read that the Sultan of Brunei had uh, been in the shop, and it's a appointment only. I'd also read like Tyson used to buy fur coats from there yeah. and everything. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, let's get on to this. So I um, started looking into it, you know, made some sort of inquiries, phone calls and stuff. And then we thought, you know what, let, let's give it let's give it a go. Um, we had all, um, other credit card details, but people think we actually did the Sultan of Brunei's credit card. It wasn't, mm-hmm. we, didn't, we didn't, we just used his name. It was all, everything was paid for on different credit cards, yeah. i.e. the Learjet that was flown over, Gulfstream Learjet, 150 grand. That was a banker's credit card. So um, did you fly from Manny Airport? No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but, but no, what, no, what happened? We, <laughs> we'd, I'd, we didn't fly. We just hired the jet. Yeah, by the way, it looked apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean... You need the, all that cover, that backstory. There you go. Yeah. So, but it went back and forth. We said, look, we're interested um, in um, your diamonds and watches. Uh, we've got... Was you dressed up at the time, like, really, in, in the grip? Like, yeah. It was over the phone. Oh, yes. We didn't have to. I mean, oh, if they want, you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't have to. It was yeah. over the phone, and it was just that in them days, in communication was just over the phone. We didn't yeah. we didn't physically go into Bijan. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but this went on for weeks, and, you know, that's to. I mean, it, at one stage, we had um, the, the palace's number. So if, if we tried it ourselves, we rang it. If you, if you, it's just like you're in the Queen, you're not getting yeah. through to the Queen. You know, they'll t- you know, you get through to the secretary. And so... We'd give him the number and stuff, and I said, I said, I was the, I was representing the Sultan of Brunei because you will never get them ringing direct. Yeah. So he said, we we've, we've got wedding in London, and we want a selection of jewelry. Never spoke about money, um, because when you're rich, you don't, you know, um, and don't talk about prices. No, no, no. By idea, you know, <laughs> you can, the world's your oyster. Yeah. So, um, um, we just said to him, look. We want the best of the best, and we've come to you because you are the best, you know. Bought them up as well, yeah, you know, yeah. made them feel good, and um, we struck up a relationship, you know, with with, with the woman and man that come over, because this was like going on for weeks, asking them about, you know, the, you know, how was how was family. What year was this? Uh, ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. Well. so it was a long time, long time ago, and um, so it went on for weeks because. Um, we were looking at different options going over there, but the last thing you want to do is get caught in America mm. or Thailand in your case. You know, uh, I thought, even if we got arrested, I'd rather do yeah. my bird. Getting in- caught on foreign soil is not the best, is it? Mate, you know, well, so. I've seen, you know, your stories yeah. absolutely amazing. And talking to your story, it brought back, we went to Thailand once, yeah? yeah? Went to Bangkok and we was going on holiday, yeah? And we got bored, so we thought, you know what? Let's uh, let's let's do a bit of shopping. So we rang up Armani. At, at, at that time, we were staying at the Bangkok Hilton, and I think round the corner was the Oriental. I think that was the two five stars. So yeah. we're at the uh, Bangkok Hilton. So same thing. We ring them up and said, right, you know, so and so is going to come in, and you know, looking at um, all the fa- new fashion trends and whatever. And this time, though. No, we actually went in, yeah. I'd be mate, I said, listen, you you stay on the phone, we'll go in. Yeah. Two of us have gone in and 
we, we just like give us 10 pairs of them yeah. 10 pairs of that this that the other and we had that much is we can't carry it out and i remember it really well because the woman who was the manageress she's one of the beautiful women i've ever seen yeah and um i just thought wow and um so we've done all this shopping and they're saying oh we can't carry it you know what i mean so are we going to take it so I said we will take it for you and we're thinking the, I mean, you know what i mean the last thing i want is you to fucking <laughs> drop it off at the hilton where yeah, i'm staying yeah. and then a few days later we're gone <laughs> yeah so we so what we did is i told him i was staying at the oriental yeah. dropped it off on the foyer and got a few cabs and took it back and we really you know what looking back especially after the yeah, watching yeah. your story just for, for some clobber uh you've re- gone a long time for that oh, as well mate. trust me yeah, it's, it's daft on it because yeah. you know sometimes out of boredom um you do things don't you and i remember that story you it know says, it says god has work for adelans well it, yeah the devil has work sorry for adelans yeah, yeah. so I, and that was the only time i've been back yeah. I, that was the only time i went i never went back and you after mean. watching your story i won't be going back <laughs> um yeah so yeah going back to the the heist so we're going back and forth we're talking about because this was a multi-million pound heist well bill you know the thing is it's always been disputed yeah they say it's two million but it's been disputed from five to two million and don't forget this is 20 odd years ago so that's equivalent of what now yeah it's it's what like 20 it's got to be more than that now yeah and and the, the reason it's disputed is one thing I did was when they were coming over, I said to him, I go, to, I said to him when the land, I said, don't declare it with customs because mm. I didn't want to pay tax on it. As much as everyone wants, you know, I said that thinking ahead, thinking if the, you know, if the it shit is a fan, comes on sloppy, yeah. And you know what? If you run a trial on that, I could have run a trial. Say what jewelry? Where's the proof? There was no proof. It was yeah. their word. But then at the same time, you had. I didn't fancy them calling and Sultan and Bri- Brunei to England. It wouldn't have happened. It was already all over the place. I remember when when it happened, uh, the Daily Mirror did an exclusive call. Uh, what was it? The Sultan of Sting. The Sultan of Sting. They had pictures of a limo, <laughs> Learjet, diamonds, and it says, who's done this? Yeah. And um, I, I think in them days, uh, it was in the top ten. Yeah. yeah. Brinks Mart was one in them days, and we was in there. And I remember reading about it and, think, and, and listening to it on the radio, I'm thinking, oh, my God. So, I mean, one of the first things we had to do was when, when we got the Tom was, yeah. I, I had to make sure that that's put down secure. So how much, did, how did that come to you? You, you, you so, brought that, that, what was it that you actually had, jewellery-wise? Oh, for, my... for people who don't know what Tom is, it's jewellery and it's a slime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom's Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, you know, yeah. we know that, but young kids probably Yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. So what it was was in my depositions, it, it, it's just the inventory is like that, and I've I've got it on my phone. You know, yeah. it's it was it had watches, uh, rings, necklaces, um, the main necklaces which was in the film um, is half a million. That was four sided. What movie was that? In? Uh, plastic. Um, yeah, it's got where Will Poulter in and uh, Emma Rigby. She's yeah. she was in Hollyoaks. From... I'll have to watch that. Yeah, I mean, with with plastic, um, it happened out of the blue because um, was this something to do with you? This yeah, well, what, what what had happened is when when I came out of prison, I got yeah. approached by Channel Four, yeah. and I swear to God, Bill, I thought it was a wind up. Yeah, because yeah. I've never you know like I got approached and it says first few weeks, Adam just running around, you know, take him out for food. Yeah. Anyone who knows me, I'm a big foodie yeah so yeah. I said yeah you know come and take me out and I thought this is a joke I thought these coppers so I took my solicitor with yeah, me yeah. I thought nah and then we went back and forth yeah and they, they offered me a contract they said look we want to make the f- uh, documentary and um, uh, we want to keep you on a two year retainer to do the film so the documentary was made it was called The Art of Crime which mm. was on Channel 4 and I remember in them days there was no internet and stuff so and it got two and a half million views you know um there was four documentaries and one of them was mine and mine was uh the one that got the most mm. and then nothing happened you know add the money you know um it wasn't life-changing but i'm thinking wait a minute i've just done prison i've come out you've now, been across the yeah i'm thinking what's, yeah. what's going on here you know and uh, the experience of it as well um it was filmed in uh you know, uh, in Manchester, 
and um, that was it. So two years, nothing happened. Two years passed. I'm thinking, oh, it's dead now. You know, just carry on. And then what happens? A few years later, someone else, um, a Manchester-based production company, approached me and said, "Listen, is is retainer? Don't talk to anyone." I'm thinking. Hey, talk. No one's talking to me. Who do you want me to talk to? <laughs> give me, give me some money. I'm like, yeah. right. Uh, don't talk to anyone for a year or two. Yeah. About your story. Yeah, yeah. So nothing happens. So cracking on, and then what happens is I get approached by a company that was doing a TV series, and the t- series is called Buried. Is um, you remember Snatch? Yeah. The black guy, the one with the jewel. You know the funny ones. The, the one with the jewellery uh, shop yeah, with the dogs. Yeah, there was two Le- his Lenny. name. Lenny. He's... Didn't he do a... Wasn't he in... <sighs> What's the Walking Dead? The... Save Me, I think. Save Me. On uh, Sky. Yeah, he was in The Walking Dead as well. Right. He was the one... Uh, sure this guy... Anyway. This... I'm not a silly buff, but he might be. Uh, he's massive now. Yeah. He, he's in America. And um, so the, the, the one to base a film that was made in prison, but they weren't some real life characters. So they've approached me, and I'm thinking, I go, what do you want me to do? I'm not an actor. They go, just be yourself. So um, they're giving me, like, I'm not lying to them. They give me 500 quid a day, yeah? Mm-hmm. And there's, there'll be times I'm on set, and I'll just be there playing a pool game, yeah, yeah or something. I'm thinking, I'm getting paid. And then Lenny James is there, and then they're, they're all, like, looking at me, real-life criminal and stuff. And that was mad, mad experience. And then what happens is there was a scene where me and him, um, he, he, we're playing, uh, I've, I'm, I've got an Asian firm, drug dealer firm and his firm, and we've got to have a fight um, in the gym, yeah, verbal. Yeah. yeah? And uh, I remember the cameras, like, you got four cameras on top of me, one, two for me either side. And I'm trying to say my lines, I'm thinking, oh my days. And I was, I'll be honest with you, I was fluffing it here. And uh, yeah, Lenny takes me over to the one side. He goes, Listen, relax, just chill, you know, relax. You know, you know, you know we know what you're about. Just mm. relax. Got through it, and uh, he ended up winning a fucking BAFTA. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I want to watch that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite brutal, yeah. quite violent, and um, I love a bit of brutal. Well, yeah, yeah. I can see, I can see, <laughs> I can see from your film. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, so that that happened, and then um, cracking on, and then what happens is. So this is from when I've come out, twenty zero one yeah. to in between. So nothing happened till two thousand twelve. Um, I go to a gym in Manchester, David Lloyd's, a bit of an exclusive gym. You get a lot of rich housewives and whatnot. And at that time, basically, all my routine was: I'd go to the gym, I'd drop the kids off school, go to the gym, chill out, work out, eat, and go home, and, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, and we'd all hang out together, um, some of these women and men, you know, there's a mixture of us. And um, there's a woman called Julie, Julie Southern. She's a real top woman. And her brother owns a film company that made the film uh, films, uh, Essex Boys, um, yeah, yeah. about the wrong That film. reflection involved in them. They, they made Essex Boys and they made Rise the original, of the original one. I don't. It, yeah. They made Rise of the Foot Soldier yeah. one to all all the way up to seven. Yeah, Craig Fairbash. That's yeah, the one. Yeah, That's yeah. it. So they made them film Brit flicks basically. Yeah, yeah. So um, she was she, she was just there uh, visiting them and says, "Oh, what he's working on now?" And uh, he goes, "Oh, we we'll tr- we we'll try to make a film about credit card fraud." So she's all right. She goes, "What about the the lad who did a Diamond Ice in Manchester?" And he goes, you know what, I, I, I know this story, but can you... Put us in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And same thing happened to me, yeah. Because uh, um, uh, my mate, um, my one of my best mates, uh, Oscar, who's personal training, and so he's come to me, he goes, listen, sir, he goes, he goes, someone's interested in talking to you about a film. I go, yeah. I go, I'll tell you what, tell him to come to the Lowry Hotel, yeah, we'll get a good scran out of it at least, yeah. Mm. Again, thinking about food more than anything else, thought it might be a wind-up, because it's... 12, what was it, 12 years on, so met up with him, um, that's your guy, was originally, he's from Manchester, Chris Howard, and um, me being the blagger that I am, in my head I thought, if he offers me 50, I'm going to say I want 200, and mm. somewhere down the line we're going to meet in the middle, 
minding you there's no one else at the door no yeah. one else is talking <laughs> to me at the same time thinking if he says calls me bluff i'll be no no mate i'm fully yeah, joking yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened mate he calls you bluff <laughs> well no what happened is he goes to me he goes look uh, um i want to make it around you you know we'll offer you this and you know um at that time they were saying um we're gonna make it in las vegas uh, but um, after that, uh, they decided to go to Miami. And uh, I remember saying, because my mate was going, well, listen, I want two first-class tickets for me and my mate, and I want £250 allowance a day spending. And I remember saying, oh, fucking hell, do you want to stay at the Bladio as well? Mm. I, I go, yeah, actually, I do. And um, so he goes, um, he goes, listen, your demands, yeah, um, they're too much. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and speak to uh, my partner. As soon as he said that, mate, I started twitching. <laughs> so, but I held, I held my nerve, yeah. yeah. And he goes, I even said, yeah, my mate, uh, my mate's got a gym in Manchester, Frontline Fit. Anyone's in Manchester needs to try it out, yeah. And I even said, look, I want to do a product placement. So when I do an interview, I'll, I'll put his shirt on. Yeah. And uh, um, little things like that. I was just like, I got into a role first, started off slow. Once I got into a role, I, got, I won't stop. So... He's gone away, mate. Three days, yeah, I was sweating. And I thought, I said to me, mate, because he, he was... He you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said, what we're going to do here now? Can, you reckon I can phone him up and say, listen, mate, I'll take it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and not, don't forget, you know, having a film made about you, as you know, yeah. is, 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 you know, something unreal uh, for, for what we've done. Yeah. And uh, th- he come back to me, he goes, listen, yeah, he goes... I've had to say to him because he was originally from Manchester. He said he actually knew me. He goes to get this deal through because what happened? We was arguing over um, points, uh, which is royalties. Yeah, points. Um, on, yeah, yeah. Dad didn't understand any of that. I got misled, so that was my fault in the yeah. beginning. Well, they do that. They do yeah. that. You know, I got lucky. Uh, in some ways, I got lucky. What's happened is I wanted points on the back end. They were offering me more money up front. I took the risk, I wanted points, and they, they agreed. Um, in hindsight, I might may have been better off taking the money because yeah. it didn't kick on. Um, so, yeah, um, they, they, they're true to the word. Terry Stone, Chris Howard, uh, everything they said, they delivered. I even said to him, I'm going, listen, I want me money in £50 notes. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was an unreal experience, Bill. I swear to God, yeah, going over to Miami, Sitting, sitting with the stars and you know going through your story i'm thinking oh, what am i doing here kid from cheat mill is you know it's surreal yeah 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 and then what happened is um uh, paramount studios took it on and um, they got involved so i remember going to paramount studios and uh, it was like there's three of us and there was like about 15 of them you got marketing advertising this that that and, a lot that. To go in here, and i'm like looking at them thinking man this is unreal and um so yeah so when it came out it, it was it was out in the Brit- uh, british uh, cinemas and uh they did the the premiere leicester square two cinemas I remember they, they had me on stage i was doing interviews with the actors and it, it was you know looking back you know that it was unreal and you know, it was unbelievable and i loved it you know, yeah. um, and I can I, I can identify with that experience. You know when, like you know, I was in Cannes and I had the similar, just sitting there with, and having interviews back to back with. I felt like yeah, I felt like yeah, a superstar. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even about the money, no, is it? It's, it's that experience. It was. It was the experience. I was just so um, so consumed with with the whole like the way it moved. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you've got people running around doing this doing that yeah, and you're yeah. just sitting there and, and everything's organised it was so organised yeah, and elite yeah, yeah. you know and not it, much left unsaid yeah yeah, or undone yeah. you couldn't fly over could you no um, and I, was, yeah. I ended up going to the, the Philippines right right so we, we filmed the last um, 10 days in the Philippines for a scene that I was in right right the last scene that they yeah, were in yeah yeah so, you know, I was just grateful for that experience. But yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. No, same. That, that was I, incredible. I had a part in it, and to take the piss, I said to him, "I want to, I want to be a copper." And at the end, there's. A, How did they let you back in the states, though? That's a mad oh, one. Me, I've got a story about that. <laughs> so I've not been back yeah. ever since it happened. Yeah. So um, the the bought my tickets and all that. At, at that time, uh, I went. Uh, I, my mate didn't come with me, so it was my ex-wife. Um, 
she comes with me and we fly over in London. We fly from Manchester to London. At London, yeah, they pulled me a little. Yeah, it's like, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah. And um, I thought, right, okay, fine. We get on, get to Miami, yeah, and they just take us in the back, yeah, and everyone in there, yeah, is all Mexican bandits and all sorts, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking around <laughs> thinking, oh, my days, yeah. And she's with me, yeah. And uh, the interviewers obviously separately, right? And uh, it's going on for hours. And I look, and next thing you know, I see you getting released, yeah? And I'm there. It's like, I mean, I'm not lying to you. Nitty, nitty gritty, what work you're doing, this and that. And I remember sitting down on a, on a rank, uh, one of the film guys, I go, look, I go, I'm in the back. They've got me, what do I say? You, you know what he says? Because you're fucking on holiday. Mm. They were his words. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking hell. Anyway, got lucky. They've released me. We were that fucked. What I've done is, at the airport, I've left um, my bag, um, my man bag thing, yeah, and it's got my credit card in. So while we are there filming a film about credit card fraud, yeah. someone was banging my card out, mate. <laughs> Bit of karma. Well, there you go, mate. There you go. Yeah, would you believe it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that experience was, you know, unreal. Um, from all the, like, the negative uh, experience that you had, well, not even, you know, going to prison and getting arrested, how did that come about? So how did you end up getting arrested for the uh, the ICE? Thing? So w- what's happened is um, they, started, um, they started to do um, their uh, surveillance, right? What happened was there's a phone... That was yeah. bought uh, in Cheetah Mill, pays you go phone. That was one link. And the other link was uh, one of the chauffeur's phones got used because my mate's phone's battery ran out. He yeah. uses the phone, rings back to Manchester. So now they know there's a connection to Manchester. So uh, this lad who who's the one who's the snitch who got caught, um, what's happened is we've told him to go and get a phone. Don't go anywhere where there's cameras. Could have gone to the markets or something in them days. Yeah. Well, he's gone to Woolworths, the Woolworths that was round the corner from my house. He's gone in there, bought the phone, and that phone, that's the only thing, by the way, that we actually paid for. The whole operation cost us 90 quid. Yeah. jets, limousines, flowers, you name it, SES bodyguards, yeah. nothing was paid for by our money, apart from that bloody phone that was 90 quid. So they've gone to them, and they had the surveillance, because it was cheap, mill. You know, tend to keep the surveillance a bit longer. So they had footage of an Asian kid going in, buying the phone. And then what they decided to do was um, follow us. So what they do is, if I went to you, they'd follow you. You went to him, they'd follow him. And uh, and we knew, you know what I mean? So we, we, we've given them the run around. Yeah, By yeah. this time, the jewellery's been put down, yeah. You know, and... and part Could you drop that off? No, no, no. What's happened is my... Uh, my best mate, he was living in London at the time, and um, what it was was we was we, we was trying to get him up, get him up to Manchester somehow, and 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 get it off. We were knackered, you know. This had gone on for weeks, yeah, and um, we were trying to get him up to Manchester. In fact, to Man United, I remember ringing him up saying, uh, representing the Sultan of Brunei, I want a suite. Mm. And if if you Google famous fans in United, it comes up. It was actually me. And uh, we was going to get them up there and just think, you know, just run off with the bag somehow. So what's happening is I realised, I know, because he'd, he'd done stuff with me before, but mm. never to that scale. In fact, he was in Thailand with me mm. in the shop. So I rang him up and I just thought, give him minimum information because I don't want him to, you know, start flapping. Yeah. So I said, listen, dress up, dress up as a prince, yeah, look the part, yeah, just going to collect the parcel. And, and that's it, you know. So he, he's got picked up in seven limousines, sat in, in the middle, and uh, they've took him to the hotel. Well, when they come over, there was a limousine waiting for them with flowers, yeah? Mm. You know what I mean? To make him feel at ease. Uh, everything was comp at the hotel. Even though no one met him, yeah. everything, I was on the phone to him yeah. all the time. <laughs> you know, eat what you want, oysters, this and that, yeah? And, you know, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> you know? Um so, so it's all the minute details, yeah. you know what I mean? Flowers, everything. So the next morning, uh, he's got picked up and uh, they've took him 
with the SAS bodyguard that was hired, just doing his job. Yeah. Big lad, bit like yeah. you, won't want to mess with him. <laughs> um, so they go to the Sheraton where they were staying. Now this was we were playing it by ear because because we was on the other, other end of the phone. We can't actually see what's going on. We can yeah. only hear. So like, what's going on? He says, "Oh, I said, listen, right? I go. You're gonna have to say to the, don't get out, but say to the bodyguard." that tell him that he wants to view it in private because at that time the Sultan Brunei was connected to the Dorchester yeah. so he wants to view it in private and uh, he's gone over this and uh, this is disputed from if you watch The Art of Crime yeah. on that it says the SAS bodyguard snatched the box off him and give and give it to uh, my mate but well, why would he snatch the box mm. you know what I mean they passed it him they went to cover themselves. They passed it him, and he's passed it on to me, mate. And um, after after a bit, I said, "Right, what's going on?" And he goes, "Well, we just parked up. We go, well, tell the chauffeur to drive off." As he's drove off, in my head, I'm thinking somewhere down the line, we're gonna have to get him to do one. And uh, by chance, what's happened is the chauffeur, he's got a bladder problem, so he needs a piss. Yeah, mm. so we stopped, and I go, "What's going on?" He goes, "The chauffeur's gone for a piss." I go, are you taking a piss? You better get the fuck out of there. Scarpa, he's caught the tube. He actually lived in Salau, caught the tube mm. to Salau next morning. What I did is I said, don't come Manchester, go to Leeds. Went to Leeds, got it off him. I said, right, listen, you go home, sit tight. You're going to get looked after. At the same time, I'm digging. You're getting the first knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. So while, while in Manchester, the kid who's bought the phone, we're getting, you know, because we're in contact with each other, you know, and the following us. And I remember it was because it's winter. And I remember there's a van parked outside my house, yeah. Mm. And I thought, this is dodgy, this. I remember going, yeah. Yeah, lads, you want some pizza? I'm going to order a pizza. Banging on the door, you know, cat and mouse, as yeah, you, yeah, you know yeah, what it's yeah. like. So, I was like, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and so what's happened is, this has gone on for a few weeks, then bang, 17 houses. So whoever I went to... in hit the, everyone. You, they hit everyone. First thing in the morning, there's about 20 coppers outside, back and front. Now, mind you, my dad has never seen a copper knock on the door mm. in his life, yeah. And they, no, he, sorry, he wasn't even there. He was in Denmark. So they knocked on and mate, it was like a... It's like a pro. They didn't obviously kick the door down enough. And they surrounded the house. They know yeah, these yeah. guys are. Just, they're not violent. They ain't got previous. And um, they've knocked on the door, and um, mate, they've come in, and I thought this is it. And they're going through everything, and they find a suitcase yeah and it was me dad's one of them poxy, you know them three digit yeah, yeah. ones, yeah. And they go right, open this. And I go, I don't know the code. They go, open this. We're gonna prize it open. And it was my dad's suitcase, and guess what his, uh, the code was? 007, <laughs> Asian 007. <laughs> so, yeah, they didn't find nothing. Like I said, they, yeah. you know, they weren't gonna. And uh, But when they've knocked on that, that prick's door, he's got the Sultan of Brunei like that flipping on his wall, yeah? yeah. And he's got the watch, red and That was his cut, 90 grand. That was the only thing that ever that they ever recovered. Yeah, the watch. Yeah, so they get, he's... That's it now, bang, straight to Brixton. Because mm. cause, cause the Tom, the jeweller, landed in London. What happens We get later on? Where are we going to get tried? Mm. Where it lands? So he gets remanded in Brixton with the Prince, yeah, and we're getting word back, listen, hey, them two are not having it, yeah? Especially the one that's been caught. Yeah. And obviously I'm getting word back, listen, keep your mouth shut you know, to the family, he'll get looked after, not having it, mate, yeah. fucking screaming. And, and you know, Bill, over the years, you meet people, they might be your friends or not, yeah, you don't know how people react to the actual shit hits the fan. And the thing is, the ironic thing is, you're not looking for white collar crime, what we did. Yeah. You're not looking at double figures, you're looking at a small sentence and you're probably coming out to somewhere. Just take the hit, yeah. But I think what happened is when they went Brixton, as yeah. you know, notorious sales, yeah, yeah. They had never been in either. So they, they started flapping. So what's happened is 
my biggest concern was the Jura. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, I thought, biggest concern, that's, that's done. Um, and um, um, I just thought, right, okay, um, it's going to be a cutthroat defence. You're going to blame me, I'm going to blame you. And what's going to happen is we're both going to get slammed. Yeah. So I've gone in, I've held my hands up. And what I did was, um, uh, the Prince, I thought, I said, listen, he had nothing to do with it. You know, last minute thing, asked him to pick someone up. He didn't know what he's picking up. So he was on, he'd been on remand six months. So by the time he got to court, which was Kingston Crown Court, um, he, he got a walkout. Yeah. The snitch got a walkout. First time offender for me, um, I got three and a half years. And that was because I was expecting a bit less because at the same time, I remember when I was, uh, sorry, I was in remand. I got put in remand and uh, I remember reading some, some guy in London did uh, a white collar crime and that was equivalent to a couple of million and he got community service. Yeah. So I was thinking, all right, and you're know, expecting time, but I was expecting two, not three and a half. Yeah. But because of the headlines and, you know, everything else. The glamorized the f- there. That's right. Mm. So, so what's happened is I got myself a QC, Jonathan Goldberg, He's in, he is was one of the top five QCs of all time. He did the Brinks Mac case, um, and he took on my case. And uh, he's actually in the the documentary, The Art of Crime. And <laughs> I remember he sat there on a big sofa. He's only a small man, small little Jewish man. And he goes, "These kids, yeah, these kids could have been anything. They ended up on the wrong side. Mm. Whatever they wanted to be, they could have been. It's just unfortunate they ended up on the wrong side. Yeah. You know." So, so yeah, I get the bird, get remanded. Um, no, because I was, I was remanded in Brixton. Uh, when I got sentenced, it took me to uh, Wandsworth. Now, again, you probably know. No First did. time, yeah. yeah. And my mate, yeah, he was the one who he was the one who got caught in Holland, yeah. So he'd done a bit of bird, and he goes, man, he goes, sack. He goes, you know what? When they lock you, because they put a separate, yeah? yeah. He goes, sack. When they lock you up, yeah. Press the bell and say to him, can I, can I pad up with me, mate? Wrong move. <laughs> press the bell. <laughs> press the bell. Next, you know. What? Uh, any chance sir, I can get padded up with me, mate? Are you fucking taking the piss, slam. Yeah. So, uh, so know, there's not, there's not. On here. Well, that jail, um, ones with mate. When we were there at the same time, yeah. I remember you used to hear things at nights, yeah. You know the um, the right mob, you know, going in, uh, kicking the shit out of people, yeah. and. After I after I'd left there, it got shut down. They called it a, bi- a barbaric regime in there, you know, because um, it's twenty three hour lock up, no electric, ten pounds. So when was this? What year was that? Well, we're looking at late nineties. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Yeah, you will. You will have. Yeah, I was there in two thousand and ten. Well, I yeah, I remember Pat, Pat Tate's brother was on a um, was on the shavery at the time. Big hmm. kid used to wear used to wear gloves constantly, wouldn't. Yeah. So yeah, well, he probably, probably knew well. about COVID yeah, further down the line. This is a bad. I mean, we're going, we're going what? Yeah. How long ago was that? No, two, ten, what, 12 years ago? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you were there in 99. Yeah, yeah, and you was, uh, did you, was you in the gym? Uh, the gym order. Like? After gym order in yeah, 2010, yeah. yeah. I, I got a job in the kitchens, but the, uh, to, uh, to be honest with you, when I was there, because it was in the papers and all that, yeah. The screws used to have banter with us, and, and we was obviously being, being Manx and, and United fan. Ninety nine, mate, the fucking treble, yeah. yeah. I remember being in the cell, right, and obviously we didn't have no tellies. We had the radio, yeah. and and the lads were smacking the doors and all that. You fucking Manx swats. And I remember, <laughs> I swear to God, on the ninetieth minute, I was just about to switch the radio off, yeah. and Ole did the trick. And I remember not seeing nothing for six months, yeah, So yeah. one of my mates, because I would have been there, because when I came out, I was there in 2008, and I was there the year after. And uh, so I missed the flipping, you know, biggest... Game see, of your life, yeah. Biggest game and the treble, because I got locked up. I remember the last game was uh, the FA Cup semi-final when Giggs did that Maisie run. I, I watched that on the teller, and then I got locked up and I didn't see nothing. I was, yeah, I was banged up with his brother, Rodri. Was you? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, he's from your neck of the woods, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's had a bit of a rough ride, hasn't he? Yeah, good kid, I like Rodri. Yeah, well, yeah, I've watched his, uh, 
interview interview with James. Yeah. Um, I've got to give a shout out to James English, yeah. top fella. I spoke to him the other day. I told him um, he uh, regards you really highly, yeah, mate. Sure. And yeah, he's a he's a top fella. Yeah, I like James. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so did me bird came out. Channel four approaches me. Further down the line, things happen, and then. In 2012, I signed the deal for Plastic. That went on for two years. And then um, um, I came out. And then um, since then, nothing. The only thing that I've not done is a book, but hopefully this year, through yeah. yourself and yeah. uh, uh, yeah, Jonathan. We're in, we're in trust with Jonathan. Jonathan's a, a really good literary agent, so hopefully that was not hopefully about it, mate. It's a great story. It's just about... Oh, so, mate. The, um, if, he, he, if he didn't think there was anything... In it, he wouldn't bother. Yeah, I yeah, I know, yeah. I know him well enough. So yeah, it's a uh, that's that's something positive as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I've got kids, yeah, and and I, I want I want to get into schools. You know, like you said, do yeah. a bit of mentoring, give something back, and because when, when I did this, uh, when it actually happened, my first daughter, she, uh, my wife at the time, she was pregnant, and I remember when I got out on. Uh, for uh, for a man, I actually seen seen her get born and then and then went in. So that was a touch. Yeah. And uh, since then I've had seven kids. Seven. Wow. Seven. Yeah. And Adam's with us today. He's in the yes, background. Yes, yes, lad. <laughs> How's he going? <laughs> so sure. um, yeah, seven kids, uh, five wives, and loads yeah. <laughs> loads of wedding cakes. Uh, yummy lad. I've, I'm, I've got one and I'm on, you know, I'm settled. Well, I can see you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we, so going forward, right, so I, I like the, the idea of, like, because you've got a great message and, you know, the message in schools is important because we can talk about, like, knife crime and gang culture, but that is a gang culture. You know, it's it, it, it sort of, it's organised gang, it's organised crime. So you can go in and do all that, you know, mentoring young children about, the glamorous stuff. Yeah, well, this is it. You know, over the years, that's what I get. And people don't understand. Regardless, it did affect my life. Yeah. You know, um, obviously, going in prison, you know, you, you know yourself, it's not the best place to be. Um, and, you know, putting your family, it's a shame. You know, the Asian yeah. culture, it's a shame on my family. I'm the only person who's ever been in trouble, you know. How did your dad take that? Because I know you speak out oh, of him. Yeah, um, he, I lost my dad 10 years ago and there's a day that I don't think about him mate and um, I remember him coming to see me in prison in Brixton big man yeah and the searching and everything and as he was leaving he, he had a tear in his eye mm. and I said to him because I was doing a short sentence I said to him don't you know that's it dad don't come again yeah. you know and he was a gentle giant and you know what I was ashamed yeah but what had happened is a lot of his friends and people around Cheat Mill mm. were going up to him and saying, listen, he's done wrong, yeah, but it, if you actually look at it, it's quite funny what mm. he did. He didn't stab anyone. He wasn't, you know, selling drugs. And um, so I think over the years, he must have done because when, when he died and he, he had that bloody suitcase, 007, mm. in, in the suitcase, he had my depositions and he had a picture of uh, me, him and my daughter. And uh, yeah, I miss him. I wish he was here. And I wish he, he could have seen, you know, plastic, yeah. um, seeing me on the red carpet and stuff. And um, um, seeing all the positive gains yeah. out of all that negative. You know, that's that's the shame with my dad, you know, you never had the never had the opportunity because he passed away. That must have been about seven seven years ago now. And that was the, the similar. You know, you never see my life come to to fruition in that area. Yeah, yeah. We see me cleaning and yeah. recovery. Mm, mm. But you never actually seen. And that's why my last book that was published mm, with the mm. Elbow Jonathan it was um, dedicated to me, Dad. Yeah. Because I wish he'd either been like you know, because fathers are our role models, aren't that's they? It, you know, that's it. They sort of you know, the day it's an issue, you know, we we I had a few bad experiences with my dad, but you know, yeah, he, he was violent, wasn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. just he has his demons, and when I, when I, on reflection, when I look back, I think you know, it was as tough as it was for him, and he dealt with it 
very differently today the way I would. You know, I couldn't imagine, you know, doing that to to a younger me. Yeah, especially yeah. Especially my son, you know, yeah. you can get away with murder. You know, yeah, yeah. Literally, like, yeah, you know, yeah. 20 months, but yeah. It's, um, it's, um, it's amazing that you can kind yeah. of, like, be shit. But listen, I've got to say, you're doing an amazing job with your kid. You know, that story, I love watching you now. Imagine. It says, yeah. Lovely, lovely. In fact, I want to meet him. Yeah. You know, um, I was gonna say, I want to bring him up. Yeah, yeah. Bring him up. We're gonna go for a curry. You love oh, a bit of a curry. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Food is my game. Bring we him know. up. I've yeah. seen the video. It, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, mate. Honestly, respect for that. Thank you, you very know. much. Um, it takes a lot, you know, for yeah. for what you're doing. You know, um, well, I appreciate your time. And what I always say at the end of a podcast, right? is what would you, right, any pearls of wisdom, right, because we've come to the end now, and maybe we could go on even further, but we'll just be, like, treading all ground, what, wouldn't what, we? What would I do? Well, first... Fair, any pearls of wisdom, you, your Adam's here, yeah, your son's yeah. here, so what would you say to a younger version of yourself coming through the doors of life? Don't get married five times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, seriously, what I'd say is, get your head down, and I mean, he's here, yeah, you know, he's my witness. He's a good kid. Just get your head down, yeah. study, yeah, because this this game it don't last forever, yeah. yeah. And you, you end up you're gonna lose, yeah. It, especially in this day and age, yeah. You can't do nothing without someone knowing. Uh, get your head down and um, make some of yourself. Make make some of yourself. Make your family proud, you know. And uh, pass it on to your kids. Brilliant. I'm with that. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs>